maybe 100 shares. 100 shares of steel. Very good. Thank you. Jimmy. Jimmy. Okay. Yes, Governor. Jimmy, what's the matter with the water? Oh, the plumbers must have it turned up. They're getting an estimate on the pipe. Well, you tell the plumber to turn it off. I want to walk. Yes, sir. And 47 and a half. Mm -hmm. Back at 153. Mm -hmm. I'm at 82. Oh, plumber. Mr. Plumber. Somebody called? Yes. Turn on the water. The boss wants to wash. Why didn't he wash it home? How long will it be, Mac? We'll revolt through. He can have it now. And say, you may as well tell him that these telephone booths are in a terrible shape. Let's see. Five rows of pipe. Five rows of pipe. What are you doing there? <laughs> I was just reading a wee bit of poetry. Well, you better go down to the shop and do your reading there while I while I measure off the ground floor pipe. All right, I'll pick a fourteen streetcar. The streetcar? Since when did you quit walking, you Scotchman? Or did you find a gold mine? No, a gold a transfer. Uh, You would find it bad, though. Let me see. Five rows of pipe that must run the full length of the room. One well, five times three is fifteen. Fifteen. Fifth. And, and start to measure from the same. Fifteen. Thirty. Forty-five. Fifty-nine and a half. Seven and a half. Eighty. I wish these men had stop dabbing so I can get my measurements here. These fellows can certainly pick out the most peculiar places to an oil person. I swear it was more. Fifty. Thirty. Forty-five. Sixty. Seventy-five. Ninety. 105, 120, 135, 150. Uh, 150, 135, 120. Did you take my order for 152? Yes, sir, I got it. That's fine. Uh, can I be of any service to you? I'm figuring five. How much did you want? Oh, about a hundred. Atlas pipe? Sure, that's the only kind that's any good. Very well, I'll have your order right in, sir. Hey, hey! Hey, mister! Hey! Dad, you know, I I always knew that you could buy automobile tires in a drugstore, but I never thought you could buy pipe in a place like this. <coughs> yes, men, lot of men loaf around here, don't they? Well, I can't. Here you go, Mac. Make it snappy, will you? Okay. Say, the market's moving right along this morning. It certainly is, but in uh, What are those men doing up there? Giving lessons in arithmetic? <laughs> There you are, Mr. Fancy. Here's your pipe. Pipe? <laughs> call it pipe if you want to, but I call that paper. But, but, but that's your confirmation for your order for stock. Stock? I don't want any stock. I want pipe. Lead pipe. M-E-D. Lead pipe. I'm a plumber. Sorry, Mr. Clancy, and I thought you were putting in a buying order for stock. No, I don't want any stock, and I wouldn't have it. It's ordered. Thanks, Mac. Okay. It's all right, my error, but 
too bad. Since I put this order in, stock's gone up two points. You've made over $200 already. $200? Wait a minute, hey! You mean to tell me that since I've been standing here, I made myself $200? That's right. That is according to the present market quotation. $200? That is, if you uh, don't cancel this order and give me your check for $750 to cover the margin. Margin? What's margin? Margin is this. You put up 20%. Yes. Then we put up the balance to carry the stock for you. Oh, oh yeah. That's uh, just like the installment plan. Yes, in a way. Uh, is, this, uh, is this the way they make money in the stock market? Well, this is one of the, one of the ways they do it. One of the ways? Well, well, well. How long has this thing been going on? Hello, Mac. Well, well, here are your samples. You've only four today. Thank you. Hmm. I've been waiting two days for that sample of toothpaste. Mac, you know I almost feel like a partner. Aye? How's that? Don't you remember? Twenty years ago, today you opened this door, and I started bringing in, and I've been coming, rain or shine. Snore, sleep, ever since. That you have. And to show my appreciation, take that sample home to your family. Thanks. Hello, Walker. You'll seem mighty happy today. I am, and I have very excellent reasons for being happy today. Did you order the pipe? I did, and it's gone up two points already. You lost your mind? No, I've just found it. That's a blessing. Hmm. Mac? Jay's not a very smart man. Since when? Before I left Berry and Company this morning, I looked at the board, and my shrewd eye gazed upon Atlas Pipe. And knowing that we use so much of it, I called to Freddy Sanders. You know, he's Berry's right-hand man. And I says, Freddy, order me 100 shares of that pipe, says I. Aye? Mm. And before he could hardly, that is right after he got in the order, stock went up two points. It's pipe we're needing, not stock. Yes, but it's a whole lot easier to earn money with your brains than it is wiping a giant. Aye, but tis gambling and no good will come of it. You'd better stick to plumbing. <laughs> you can call it gambling if you like, but you've got to give me credit for making the firm of Clancy and McIntosh richer by $200. The firm of Clancy and McIntosh? Yes, but to the goodness of my heart, I ordered the stock in the firm's name. Oh, hey, no part of it. You had beginner's luck. Keep your winnings and let that be a lesson to you. And listen to this. If I ever told anybody that you refused a hundred dollars, <laughs> they'd say it had gone out of your head. get the money to buy so much stock. Well, as a matter of fact, it doesn't require a lot of money. For the very simple reason that you buy on margin. Margin? What margin? Margin? You want me to tell you what buying on margin is? I'll do that. That's the way you buy your stock. As much, uh, you, you don't pay as much for more stock that you would get if you paid the money that the stock was worth. Uh, uh, now, do you understand? No. Well, then, I'll try and explain it to you, even so that you as a Scotsman will understand. Do you remember the time that Nora and I bought that piano for Katie from Levi and Goldberg? I do that. Well, 
All we had to pay for that piano from Levi and Goldberg was $10 a month. Then we paid Levi and Goldberg $10 the second month, and the piano was still ours. Then the third month, we paid Levi and Goldberg $10 more, and we still own the piano. Now, in by buying on margin. Where's the piano new? Back at Levi and Goldberg. Donald, my lad. You forgot to put the bread on. Here it is, Dad, but you can't use it while it's all dried up. Look at it. Do not throw it away. We'll toss it. <laughs> it's probably the classes. Let them in. Hello, Mr. Clancy. Ah, hello, Daddy. How's the big architect? Well, just full of plans. Uh, How are you, Mr. Clancy? Fine, Donald. Uh, where's Katie? She down at the foot of the stairs, talking to a big, fine chunk of a boy. Say, she has more fellas uh, than the YMCA. I'm going <laughs> to give your father a hand with the servants. A man has no place in the kitchen. Mm, look at the large peas there. Come on in, Katie. What's the big idea in keeping me waiting? Keeping you waiting? Is this your anniversary? Well, if it was, I wouldn't allow children. Oh, mister. Oh, congratulations. Many happy returns to the day. Thank you, Katie. Katie, darling, come in and help me with the food. All right, mother. Uh, James, uh, my cloak. Oh, my, what a long tail our cat has got. Oh, scat yourself. <laughs> you brought your appetite, will you? I sure have. Why, Gary, I'm as hungry as a horse. Why, well, do a thing to order some hay. Uh, uh, you're feeling your oats today, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> will you hear a wee drop? I will, that. You're a man after me own heart. Aye, you're too good a man. Not the... Have a little scotch in you. But what the years old? Mm. It's a little small for its age, ain't it? <laughs> Take one yourself. That won't live long. <coughs> that lands are very nicely. You know the Scots may make it, but Michael takes the Irish to appreciate it. Your appreciation is well developed. Ha <laughs> ha, it's just me that knows that. Oh, you look here. Sandy Cloud has here. There it is. Yes, oh, I can't well, right, 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 there's your spaghetti for the there's ones that don't like cabbage. There's, there's your spaghetti, and here's your roast to beef. Oh, Put them right down there. By Gary, I'm going to take my coat off and do a neighboring man's job on this. Now you make yourself comfortable. Oh, oh, well, you got oh. napkins and everything. Here's to me. Smart men are getting scared. Oh, you're smart. This is in your wife's name. Here's to the 20th anniversary of our partnership. May we have 20 years more. We'll both drink to that. To you, Mac. And to you, Maco. And to your family. And to yours. And to theirs. Michael, will you please sit down and eat the supper table cold? All right. 
Well, I'll be Dr. Carver and the roast beef. Will you have yes, some spaghetti? Who wants some spaghetti? You want some roast beef over here? Give me your plate, and I'll give you a piece of meat, Dr. Carver. Hey, you want some spaghetti? Hand over your plate. Who wants some spaghetti? You want some roast beef over here? Give me your plate, and I'll give you a piece of meat. I want some of that. Will you have some of the meat, Dr. Carver? Come on, hand over your plate. Get your finger out of the spaghetti. All right, there it is. Right there it is. You have plenty of it. All right. Oh, my God. What's that? Say, I was standing in the I couldn't eat another. Look, Mark. I'm about three feet over the building line here. You'll just sit there and enjoy yourself. Katie and I will wash up the dishes. Oh, no. Do not do them tonight, Mrs. Clancy. Come over in the morning. You must spoil your pretty dress. Sure, Michael promised to buy me a new one tonight. He's gonna buy me one, too. Certainly, there's nothing too good for him. Well, plumbing business must be good. It certainly is, Danny. Can you imagine getting six dollars an hour for sleeping under a bathtub? But there is a lot of money to be made in pipe. Well, I guess I'll go out on the roof garden. Could I go with you? Sure. I'm not particular. Oh, neither am I. Oh, my, oh, my. I've eaten so much I'll have to diet. What color? Sure, you could stand a bit of weight. Well, I am getting a little bit heavy here. Yeah. You are getting a little broad across the narrows. Come in. Good evening, Hi, Mark. This is a surprise. Come in, gentlemen. We at the Caledonian Club have called to pay our respect and to congratulate you on the firms on the bus. Well, it's not a nice of you to think of that. Mark, you know all the boys. Sure. Hello, Mac. Hello, Mac. Hello, Mac. Hello, Mac. How are you, Mac? Hello, Mac. Boys, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Flatsey, Mr. McPherson, Mr. McTavish, Mr. McDougall, and Mr. McGregor. How are you, Mr. McGick? How are you, Mr. McMa... Uh, Mr. Mahou? Mr. McFadden. That name wasn't mentioned. How are you, Mac? <coughs> we thought we'd drop in and sing some of the old hymn Well, before we start the massacre, don't you think we'd better step inside and uh, wet your whistles? Well, it's it's mighty generous of you. Aye, with my refreshment. But he's right, my lad. Uh, we don't endure it, never hurt any man. Remember, boys, the camels are coming. Poof, <laughs> but... Just go on living under a moon like this? On a fire escape? What a hot Romeo you are. Traveling man, coming down to the stage, you wanted to stay all night at the farmhouse. Well, the farmer says, I'm very sorry, but I only have the one room that my wife and I occupy. Yes. But he says, hey, you don't want to sleep in the dark. you drop a toast to me and I heard you the first time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, say, let's give him a song.
you ever been in love, Don? What do you want to know for? Oh, go on, tell me. What's she like? Well, let me see. She has the prettiest pair of Irish eyes. And a nice nose. A Roman nose? Mm-hmm. Roman all over her face. And a very pretty mouth. A little too big, but pretty just the same. Or if she were here, Donald, what would you do? I don't know. No, on, Don. What would you do? Well, I'd probably put my arm around her like this. Mm. Oh, I take back what I said. About what? About your not being a hot Romeo. Katie, you want to go for a ride? You don't want to go for a ride. Come back in ten minutes. All right. Donald, why don't you tell that girl that, that you love her? Oh, what's the use? She's always running around with some Tom, Dick, or Harry. Well, maybe if you told her you loved her, she wouldn't go running around like that. You'd better hurry up. You'll be late for that date. And you know, I've been thinking about that girl you love. I'm not going out tonight. Only Scotland. Yeah, Scotland. Yeah, Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, come here, boys. Come here. I want to show you something. Look, look. Bend down. Bend down. Look. Did you ever see a finer knob in your life than that? You've got to go to bed. You've had enough. They, they don't make that much. Besides, I know my own capacity. You might know your own capacity. But like everything else, you overestimate. <laughs> ah, the way you know it's best. <laughs> Don't worry now. Step outside there and I'll join in the jiffy. Well, good night, gentlemen. Good night, Mrs. Flanders. Take care of you. We'll be right with you. Now we got to have that other bar. We'll let the booze them up as well. Oh, yeah. You'll be worth having something else. Fine. 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 Our bosses have cars, I don't know. Wait a minute, I'll open it with the screw. That's too small and tiny. This, that was made for cars, sir, for children. This is the way to open the bathroom. Hey, Martha, you feel from the heart. That's a lot of trouble. Oh, 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 that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Mm. A fine spot for me to be in, with five thirsty sipping Scotchmen. Ooh. I only had a dipper. Ah. Mm. I feel like the mother of a litter of airedales. You're like another pussy cat. Uh, 
Faraday, you'll have to get some more of that insect powder. Man to think with that thing going on. Now, little girls and boys, I will tell you a bedtime story all about the three bears. The great big bear, the medium bear, and the little bear. You and your three bears. What do you mean by trying to frighten children? That'll stop him. Dave. That must be Sanders. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr. Clark. Come in, Mr. Sanders. I got here just as soon as I could, Mrs. Clancy. Sit down there. Tell me. Just, uh, what is this margin business? Just this. There's been a sharp decline in stocks. I came out to get your check so that I can protect you in the market in the morning. But I've already given you margin money. Sorry, but I'll need some more. Oh. More installments. Ha! I got you are getting to be just like Levi and Goldberg. This is very serious. Mm -hmm. If you don't give me the money, you're apt to lose everything you've got in it. Yeah. Do you mean I'll be broke? Well, I'm afraid you will be. If you don't give me the money before the market opens in the morning. Red, red, red. Ha! That's the best news I've heard in months. I'm glad. Mr. McIntyre. Sit down, Mac, and take a load off your feet. Freddy, you and I will be stepping in the kitchen and uh, we'll fix up this little matter. You'll be excusing us for a minute? I thought you told me that this stock would always make money. I believe it will, Mr. Clancy. Mm. Why, the stock's as good as gold. It'll come back. Well, then, if that's the case, why not let them fellas down there wait? My business isn't done that way. Uh. Well, it's a lot of money. In fact, I've got to give you a company check for it. Now, don't you worry about that. You'll get your money back in a day or two. Hello, Andy. Hello. Michael don't seem like himself tonight at all, at all. Michael has not been himself for many nights. Oh, hello, folks. Hello, Daisy. Are you going down to the station to see Don Mm-hmm. I just left him to finish packing. I suppose you'll be lonely when the boy goes way out west to Indianapolis. I... But it's a grand opportunity, and he'll not be gone so long. Oh, no. Won't you sit down, Andy? Thank you. Well, I'm all ready. Oh. Uh, this is just a little going away present for Donald. Oh, that'll be a nice surprise for him. Thank you very, very much, Mr. Clancy. This will make everything okay. Hello, Catherine. Hello. Um, good evening. Sanders? Boo. What do you say we take a little ride? Well, um... Uh, maybe uh, some other time. You see, I'm going down to see Donald off. He's leaving for the West tonight. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, well, why can't we take him down? Oh, well, that'll be nice. Where is he? 
Oh, he'll be along in a minute. Come on, we'll wait, wait for him down in the car. Oh, uh, Dad, when Donald comes along, tell him I'll be downstairs. Okay. Oh, uh, Mr. Clancy, this check will be okay without your partner's signature? Certainly. Are you using the firm's money for gambling? Now, don't get excited. I'm only using it for a couple of days. But I told you I'd have nothing to do with it. Well, you haven't got anything to do with it. I'm doing it. But you're using the firm's money. Well, it's as much my money as it's yours, is it? Give me the money, man. If it was for yourself, Mackle, or for your family, you could hear it. But not for gambling. You're right, Mac. It's fine dresses. Limousines and diamonds I'd be wearing, is it? I'd be doing good if I'd been getting the money for the rich. If Say, this will you keep on. Keep your mouth out of this. Well, I was just Keep your mouth, that's enough. There ain't nothing I wouldn't do for you, Muckle. But I'm trying to stop you from making a fool of yourself. A fool of myself? Well, let me tell you that there is plenty of smart fools. Would you ruin us both? You can nay use the firm's money and that's final. Oh, that's final, is it? Very well, then. I take my money out of the firm. And that's final. Mackle, you mean you'd split our partnership? Would you let a little thing like this come between us after all these years? A little thing. A little thing. And me suffering for margin trouble. <laughs> well, once and for all, will you let me have the money? No. Uh. Night, Mrs. Clancy. He's a fine friend. Sure, and Michael Mack is a good friend. He don't know the meaning of the word. Michael, I don't know why you knew and Mac have to fight like that. I don't want you to mention that man's name to me again. Of all the sample snitching, sample eating Scotsman. Hello, folks. Hello, John. Where's Katie? She's gone out. Gone? Where? Never you be minded where she is. She's in good company. What's the trouble? Go and ask your generous father. Goodbye, Doctor. We ain't gonna close the door. He did that on purpose. Stab me in the back. Uh, wonder what's keeping your Donald. Oh, he'll be along in a minute. Why don't you uh, try to get your mind off the boyfriend and kind of give me a little break? Oh, I don't know. I, I'm kind of funny that way. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. Oh, Donald, there you are. Oh, Mr. Saunders is going to drive us to the station. Thanks very much, but I guess I'll walk. Well, Donald. You seem to be in good company. Be careful of flat tires. Thanks. Guess I'll take the air. Goodbye. Oh, Donald. Hey, Donald.
course, you've entered into this dissolution of partnership of your own free will. You'll do anything to free. And you are both of sane minds? A uh, hey, Medusa. Well, that concludes the transaction. I bid you good day, gentlemen. He's now gentlemen. and not going to touch. Yes? Oh. Oh. For you, ma Mr. Clark. Hello. Oh, hello, Freddy. Is that you? Yes. What? Miss Stark has gone at 40 points. Oh, where? How much is that in money? Where? Where? I I'd like to take it to the Waldorf Astoria for lunch. It's torn down. When did that happen? Where? Stay wherever you are. I'll be right down. Yes. Where? That's that. That's my tobacco. That is, it was my tobacco. Wait a minute. Half of that picture is mine. Well, the best half is mine.
Donald, my lad. <laughs> it's good to hear your aim again. It's great to be back, too, Dad. Surely. Thank you. Are the Clancy's moving, Dad? I so it seems. When people get rich, old friends and old neighborhoods are soon forgotten. to say goodbye. Oh, Donald. It's just because you're moving up town. That doesn't mean goodbye. Why, Katie. Do you mean that you still... Katie! Katie! What? I... Uh... Just as I thought. Wasting your time. Well, I'm surprised. And keeping out gentlemen like Mr. Saunders waiting. Come on, hurry up now and make it snappy. Well, goodbye, Katie. I guess your father's right. You mustn't keep Mr. Saunders waiting. Oh, I don't care. Let him wait. I don't care if he waits for the rest of his life. Why, Katie, do you mean that? Of course. On the level? But don't you believe me? Oh, Katie, excuse me. Thank you.
Oh, and just think, the moving wagon might have taken you out of my life forever. Oh, Donnie. There's never been anybody but you. You do, Katie. I'm going to sound like an awful sap. But I love you. Oh, Donnie. That's what I wanted you to say that night on the fire escape. Katie! 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 Chloride? Would you mind answering that doorbell? Your dinner is... Well, uh, Nora! 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 Would you mind answering the front doorbell? I can't. I'm dressed. You're dressing? Hi, uh, Gary, a woman is never dressed. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute. I'll be right out there as soon as I... Get this newfangled thing on. If McIntosh ever saw me in this, you think I've gone to the dogs entirely? Just a moment, please. Just a moment. Well, Mrs. Crossley said she needed a plumber. Are you one? I. Nora, what was it you wanted the plumber to fix? Is Mr. McIntosh there? The plumber is here. It's the pipe underneath the sink in the kitchen. Thank you so much for coming up to McIntosh. It's a pleasure to do it for you, Mrs. Clancy. So now, the neighbors complain. Uh, get this way. Pardon. Would you mind stepping out there and wiping off your feet? We're a little bit fussy about our oriental rugs. And would you mind uh, eliminating that uh, soft coal burner you have there? The odor is very disconcerting. Thank you. In passing out towards the kitchen, don't annoy any of the bric-a-brac. Mm, I suppose you've got some old family iron loose. Hey, both male and female. <coughs> don't let that bag of tools of yours uh, strike that genuine Manchurian antique. Those are bulbs, genuine bulbs from Spitunia. <coughs> Is that so? Come, oh, here is your department. Mr. Ryan, yes, sir. would you mind, uh, mind getting some newspapers to put out so this man won't soil the flow? Yes, sir. Are you 
quite sure you understand this type of work, my good man. Don't take much brain. I had a partner who did it for years. Pardon me, pardon me, this noise, this noise distracts me very much. You'll have to excuse me when I go to my boudoir. That's what I'm thinking is, that's where you belong. <laughs> Must be great working for wealthy people. Mr. Ponce, he's a mighty smart man. Yes, sir, he packed practically as much. Did he kill no one in a man on Wall Street? And he's used to the finest what I am. I heard him say myself that he comes from the nobility of Ireland. Aye? Yes. Oh, the God to give the gifts to see ourselves and others see us. Lord, you speak foreign language, too. Good evening, Mrs. Ponce. What? Oh, oh, I thought you were a lady. Oh, you did, eh? What's the matter? Can't you get that thing back on there again? I don't know who can. Well, I can, and quicker and better than you can. A fool, a jack of all three. Yes, yes, and a master at this one. There it is. As good as new. What do you say to that? I'll send you a bill in the morning. He's still scotch. You're not all enjoying yourself. Michael. Yes, what? what? Will you have a dinner time? What? Sure. Will I have a what? A cup of coffee. I will that. Can you spare this? I'm not robbing you, am I? I, uh... From the looks of the size of these cups, you'd think a midget lived here. <laughs> Oh, speaking of midgets, did you ever hear the story of the midget that married the wash woman? And got his adenoids caught in the ringer? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know a lot of other stories. I... But I, I can't think of them just now. <laughs> no. <laughs> That'll do. You were lucky to get away with that one. I guess I was at that. <laughs> Don't do that. I can't help it. Hold your breath and count ten to go away. Hmm. Count yourself ten. <laughs> you know what I wish? No, what? I wish we were somewhere where we could be alone. Just you and me. What's the matter with it here? Oh, too many people. Oh, but there's safety in numbers. Oh, then you think I'm not safe. 
Oh, I didn't say that. No, but that's what you were thinking. You know, I could make you like me. Did you say make? Sure. Look at the money I made your father. Oh, you did that too? Well, nobody else but. I think we'd better join the others. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Mrs. Stoker. Yes? Uh, do you know the cadenza from Christmas? Yes. I'll sing it for you. I was afraid of that. Sure, you take the majority of millionaires in New York. They all started from the very bottom, didn't they? And gradually worked themselves up. Not that high. And I'd never be satisfied, but. As I said, when I started to play the market. If I had started to play the market ten years ago today, I could have signed me checks, but. Stanley! What's the. Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm not saying another no. Well, I was hoping that. What? I... That was a fox pass on my part. I was saying that I would hope you would. Just a slip of the tongue. I was never so insulted in all my life. Perhaps she never sang in public before. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll hold her for a while. By the way, Mr. Clancy, not talking business, but that piece of property is a great buy. And if you don't speak quickly, you'll lose it. Well, we'll have to wait and see how the market goes, eh, Freddie? You won't have long to wait, Governor. Mm. Why don't you sell your stock and retire? Retire? <laughs> when I'm making money so easy? In the meantime, don't overlook that car. That's a bargain, too. Nice and snappy. It's the kind of a car Miss Kathleen would like to drive. Well, you know, I was thinking about that car. That would be a nice present for Katie and, uh, Freddy. Oh, is this an engagement? Hmm? Well, I owe a lot to Freddy, and I think a lot of Freddy. And, uh, they make up their minds that they want to be married. Why, every dollar I have in the world will go to them. Well, now listen, Katie, it's time you were thinking of your bridal night. And just think of the fun you're going to have in scrooning and honeymooning and Niagara Falls. <laughs> 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 now we will marry the poor child. Well, wait a minute. I'll fix that. Don't worry. Why, Katie, what's the matter? Father, please let me alone. But what will our friends and Freddy think? I don't care what they think. I suppose this is some more of Donald McIntosh's doing. Well, at least he's real. And not like a lot of parasites, I know. Well, that sounds a lot like Mike's you to bow out. Listen, don't pay any attention to her, Freddie. 
That's all right, Mr. Clancy. I don't need a red light to show me an exit. I think so. It's about time. Oh, good night, Mrs. Clancy. Good night. Lovely. Even our Good night, Well, good night, Mr. Clancy. Good night, Mr. Clancy. Sure. Good night, Mr. Clancy. Good night. 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 Good day. Good evening. Good night. Well, I'm glad this day is over. Where? Now, the daughter of yours certainly gave a fine exhibition of temper tonight before all of our friends. And that's the result of an education, is it? Well, let me tell you something. She'll hear from me in the morning. I'll tell her a few things. Tell me what to do. Well, I'll just settle now and for all. Madam, your daughter deliberately insulted me here last night before me friend. Don't forget she's your daughter and her name is Clancy. Yes, well, Where I... Is it, Father? I want to talk to you. Of course. For the way you disgraced me last night, and your manner towards Mr. Sanders. Well, I never cared for Mr. Sanders, and I never will. You never will. But I want to tell you this. I'm not going to have you caring for that Donald McIntosh. Well, I'll care for whom I please. Oh, you will. Well, let me tell you something, young lady. If you do, I'll disinherit you. And furthermore, while you're in this house, you'll do as I say. All right, then I'll go. Uh, Katie, come back here. Now, do you see what you've done? You've driven her out of the house. Oh. Well, she's always doing something I don't want her to do. You, oh, with all the millions that you're going to make in your fine fancy friends. You're just an old fool. There's no fool like an old fool. Oh, I'm an old fool, am I? Well, let me tell you something. You're no geranium yourself. There's the telephone. I can hear it. I can hear it. I have two ears of my own, and one of them's good. Hello? Yes, this is Mr. Clancy. Who's calling? Oh, Beery and Company. Hmm. Uh. Well, uh, how much margin money will you be wanting? Now, uh, let me speak to Mr. Saunders. He's gone out. Well, why didn't he call me this morning before he left? And I'd be right down. In the meantime, if he comes in, tell him to call me before I get there. Yes. This is a fine morning for me. With all the trouble that little whippersnapper has caused me, the bottom has fallen out of the market. But I want to tell you something. I want you to go out and get Katie and have her here by the time I get back. And from now on, I'm going to be the boss of this house and nobody else. I take orders from nobody. As long as I provide, I'll have the say. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. And remember that you're no bargain.
he's at the bottom of the rock now. Oh, this is terrible, disastrous. Oh, and I've got to start life all over again. And me, with diabetes at 60. I know just how you feel. And think of me, with Atlas Pipe. Oh, at 70. I work. You're just the man I want to see. Tell me, how do I stand? As far as you're concerned, you're wiped out. Everything? Everything. Oh, my ass is fine. That busted too? Completely. But why didn't you call me up? Now look at here. In a falling market like this, it's all I can do to take care of my firm's business without worrying myself about a false alarm like you. A false alarm? A false alarm. Perhaps the boy is right. Is there anybody home? Michael Clancy, you're an old fool. Come in. Well, what do you want? I was just coming down to talk over something weird. I don't think we have anything to talk about. But this concerns the happiness of our two children. I'll have nothing to do with it. I've disinherited her. No matter what you've done, in the end you'll have nothing to say about it. They'll do as they like. If it hadn't been for me, they'd be married now. You mean to say that you don't want your boy to marry my daughter? No. Not unless you give your consent. Well, that doesn't make any difference. They'll never get any money out of me anyhow. Mine. Oh, God. I was afraid you was hard hit. I haven't a thing left. Oh, yes, you have. There's a little shop down on 10th Avenue, and the sign still reads, Clancy and Mackintosh. What do you say, Michael? Do you mean that we'll be partners again? Yes, Michael.
Clancy and Macintosh. Oh, Katie, darling. Katie, me, darling. Donald, me boy, since as blind as a bat I've been, will you try and forgive me? Oh, Daddy. Well, there won't be any diamonds or limousines for a wedding present. I'm broke. Everything is gone. Michael, dear, we still have each other. And the furniture. Yeah, the furniture goes back to Levi and Goldberg. Oh, no, it won't. When I buy anything, it's paid for. Where? Then, I'm just as well off as I ever was. Aye, and you've got a son-in-law in the bargain. And Michael, dear, someday you may be having a little grandson. Well, if you ever do, take my advice and don't have them on magic. No hindi clinching. 